bring the news. We bring it live. This is 101.9 Chai FM. Good morning and Good morning. welcome to the Cabana Show, Body, Mind and Soul of Vimuna. And it is so good to be with you this beautiful Wednesday morning, the 22nd of June 2016, the 16th of Sivan in the year 5776. And again, we are live from Swat. And uh, Alon is uh, co hosting, or uh, he's uh, going to be sharing the show with me. And it's always such a pleasure to actually speak to Alon anytime. And it's just a special, special treat for the, uh, for the listeners, for my beloved listeners, to be able to hear the absolute words of wisdom. So for those that um, don't know Alon, uh, it's Rabbi Alon Anava, who had a near-death experience. And his journey for the past 15 years, as it's unfolded, has been... It's a mon been a monumental journey, and uh, I've had the privilege of interviewing him a number of times on my show, and he just, uh, just words of just such wisdom, there's things that I'm learning, there's things that the listeners are learning, the feedback that I get is just absolutely amazing. Anybody who wanting to go, who's wanting to go to hear his story, you go to his website, www.alonanova.com and you'll see his near-death experience, you'll see uh, and you'll hear it. There are questions that people have. There's so many questions around this particular subject. And this morning we are, um, so last week when Alon was with me on the show, we were talking about Sfat and the history of Sfat hours, we, we could speak literally hours and hours about the city, the holy city of Sfat. And then we spoke a little bit about the female energy of, of, uh, of Sfat. And the female energy here is so powerful and it definitely draws, uh, it draws women to Sfat and it, 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 it's giving birth to something that needs to be revealed in this world. That's my feeling. I don't know very much. I, I try my best every week just to bring whatever I can, whether it's body, whether it's mind, and it seems to mainly be soul. And the city of Sfat definitely brings out the soul in me, and it's bringing out my name, Kavana. And uh, when, when I started my show three years ago, the cabana, it was K, the K-A-B-A-N-A-H, was body, mind, and soul. It uh, body, means body, mind, and soul in Spanish. And it's definitely progressed to Kavana, but much, much deeper dimensions of, um, of my name, of my show, and what it is that I want to share with my beloved listeners. So this morning, we want to speak about the month of Sivan. I know that we are into the 16th already of the month of Sivan. So yesterday was 2 for 7, and there was full moon, and still the moon looks very, very beautiful and brilliant. And uh, as I was doing research for the show, it was just absolutely mind-blowing. Everything to do with Rosh Chodesh, everything to do with the way that we actually prepare ourselves for the new month, for the way that the month progresses. And you can see it physically, you can feel it um, emotionally, uh, uh, definitely, uh, you know, and, and physically pulls the tides. And uh, us human beings are 90% water, so it definitely has a physical effect on us. And the Jewish people have been nominated and instructed to actually announce when that new month is. And that's extremely powerful. And um, so Alon is sitting together with me now. Good morning. <laughs> so, uh, good morning, Alon. It's, it's so good to, to be with you again and to share the, 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 the show with you and to just um, uh, give my listeners such a treat in having you, uh, I, I know it's been a, a regular now, 
I, you've got the summer break at the moment, and I'm really being a hug and taking advantage of it. Baruch Hashem, <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure and my honor. <laughs> so thank you so much. So just the, the month of seven, um, there's so much to talk about in terms of what uh, the astrological sign it controls of the um, the letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the one of the, the 12 tribes, and the part of the body, the sense of the body, and, um, and of course the astrological sign, which when we were discussing what we were going to speak about, we uh, I mentioned to you that maybe we can speak a little bit about the twins, because there's just so much twinning in, in the month of seven. So, yeah. over to you. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned before about the full moon. So, yesterday morning, I was up, I think it was maybe 4, 4.30 or 5 in the morning. And when the light started shining, then it was already daylight, but the moon was bright, bright, uh, I, I have a picture, it's unbelievable, I, took, I, I, I had to take a picture of it because it was unbelievable, because it was already daylight, and the moon was still shining very, very, very bright. Oh, wow, I can oh. see that. <gasps> I mean, the picture doesn't oh, really do justice yes, to that, yes. but it was already daylight, probably it was like already oh. over, past five in the morning, yes. and the moon was shining full blast, uh, in the sky throughout the day. It was unbelievable. Yes. It was much, much unbelievable. Yes. And yesterday I, I, I had some uh, out of town lectures. I was traveling the whole day. And I, same thing, I came back at three in the morning and the moon was just the position of the moon. I mean, the way you see the moon in Israel, it's unbelievable. It's, it the angle of the moon <gasps> and, and the way it shines. Yes. It's been made unbelievable. And last week we spoke about Sfat and we mentioned that when the at the time of the Jewish court, when they used to decide when will be the moon, uh, so they would wait for witnesses to come in, to say when they saw the moon, valid witnesses, and once they would say, okay, today is Rosh Chodesh, in the, in the beginning they used to light bonfires yes. on, uh, in, in five cities, yes. and that's how all the cities used to know. Okay. And since Fat is one of the highest, if not the highest city at the time in Israel, so Tzfat was one of the cities that they used to light the, the fire. Yes. And I could see from now why, yes. why Tzfat <laughs> would be decided to be one of the cities, because we're, we're, we're elevated, we're very, very high here. Yes. And then not only that, the way the angle of how you see the moon from here is bit unbelievable. It's yes. really, really unbelievable. Yes. So we just need to go to our first ad break and we'll be back with you now. To business. This is 101.9 High FM. Good morning and welcome to the Cabana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And this morning I'm speaking together with uh, Rabbi Lon Anava and we're speaking about the month of Svat. We are on month of, uh, um, oh, month of oh, month, uh, seven. Thank you. And um, we were talking about the the fact that we've just passed the full moon, and Alon was just showing me during the break the absolutely amazing picture that he took of the moon uh, in the in the in the bright sky. Amazing to see. So, Alon, carry on. You were talking about um, the. the well, we the just quarter. mentioned yes. the the we talked about the moon and Svan yes. being one of the cities that uh, used to light the bonfires to 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 give the notification. And I was just mentioning how how I live on the top of the hill, and and the angle here, how you see the moon is been made unbelievable. Yes. And I I I I wake up early to to pray, and the, it starts shining already at quarter to five in the morning. Already have a light, yes. and this picture was probably about five thirty in the morning, and I I was shocked how the moon was so still shining so powerful, so. I had to just mention that because because you talked about the full moon and the month and so forth. So the month of Sivan is a very very special month, and it's considered by the the lunar month the third month. Uh, if we're counting the the years from Tishrei, 
then it's the seventh month. But uh, if you're counting it from Sivan, uh, excuse me, from Nisan, this is called the lunar, lunar month, then it's the third month. And Sivan is a special month because that's the month we got the Torah. Mm -hmm. That's the month that God came down to this world, which in itself is a very special month. And the Torah is called a uh, Torah Meshuleshet. Uh, 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 Meshuleshet means a triangle, but it's more coming from the word Shalosh, three, yes. that we see uh, many times in the Torah, the, the repetition of the number three. We see three fathers, uh, but so many different things in the Torah that we see that it comes in the number three. Moses was even third born. <laughs> I'm third born. Yeah, you thought third born. I'm so, second born. <laughs> so the Torah is called the uh, Torah Meshuleshet because uh, we see many times the repetition of the number three. Many people in the Jewish religion saying, oh, three is a very powerful number. So it is a powerful number because on the third month, that's when we got the Torah. And it's actually saying in the Torah, on the third day, on the third day of the month, on the third month. So it's talking about the third month. It's not mentioning the word Sivan, yes. but it's saying on the third month. Yes. It's talking about on the third day, meaning uh, Tuesday. And it's talking about on the third day of the month, wow. meaning on the Gimel of Sivan. So, so we see another hint of the number three uh, in correlation to the month of Sivan. But we also see in many uh, places the hint in the month of Sivan for the number seven. Yes. Which again, the number seven in the Torah is also a very powerful number, seven days of creations and the seven attributes and the many different th things and we see how the number seven constantly repeats itself. So there's a very big connection between the number seven and the number three of the month of Sivan. So Sivan is a very special month, uh, mainly because we got the Torah and we'll go through a little bit some of the the... the things that symbolizes the month of Sivan. We know that every month was a, it has a letter that represents it. So the letter of the, of the month of Sivan is the letter Zayn, which is the seventh letter in the alphabet. Yes. Uh, each, each month uh, is representing one of the tribes. The Rizal says that the month of Sivan is represented by the, the tribe of Zebulun. Yes which is the only name that actually starts with the letter Zayn. And the Zayn is a very special letter, because if you're looking at the Jewish letters, Zayn is the letter Vav with a little crown. Yes. yes if you just yes. picture yourself the letters, yes. and not how you write it a uh, uh, script, like yes. how you write, I mean, not how you write it with handwriting, I mean, how you, uh, the biblical letter the Zayn. Biblical. So it's a letter Vav, and then a little crown on it, a little chukchik on the top. Yeah. And this crown represents that when we got the Torah in Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, each and every one of us got a crown. Uh -huh. We actually got two crowns. Uh -huh. But then when we did the sin of the golden calf, then one of the crowns were taken. But this crown represents that each one of the Jews got a crown at the, at the Mahamad Har Sinai, the time that we stood in, in Mount Sinai. And that is the crown that, that, that we got at the time of the Torah. And, and this is one of the ways how we know that we, you know, a lot of the times you, you see that, uh, that uh, you, you, we call the ladies, the, the, the princesses, the daughter of a king. And we are children of the king. Yes. And a child of the king is worthy to wear a crown. And even in a spiritual level, we, we have a crown surrounding our head. And it's corresponding to the Ten Sfirot, that in the Ten Sfirot, it starts from the Sphira of Chochmah. But above the Sphira of Chochmah, there's a Sphira of Keter. And the one way of looking at the Sfirot is starting from the Sphira of Keter. Keter is a crown. I mean, if you're looking at the structure of the Sfirot, it will be Chochmah, Bina, and Dat, which yes. are the intellect, and then the seven attributes. And a lot of ways, a lot of times you can look at it that it's actually... Keter, Chochma, and Bina. And then Tiferet is just underneath the, the Keter. Yes. But the Keter is a crown, and spiritually we are carrying a crown over us, which is uh, one of the many reasons why Hasidic and Orthodox men wear a hat, by the way. Wow. Because uh, we wear a yarmulke for many, many different reasons. 
I mean, there's all the, the basic reasons of uh, bringing on me God-fearing and, and uh, symbolizing that something is above me, humbling myself, knowing that something is above me. There's many different reasons why one can understand, explain why we're wearing a yarmulke. But the mystical reason is because the Shekhinah, the godly revelation, the, uh, the feminine part of the godly revelation is hovering over us. Wow. And it's actually considered chutzpah to walk what's called gilui with a with a bare head. Yes. And I cover my head to make a separation between me and the Shekhinah. This is mystically. So, of course, comes the, the question, why, so why does girls don't wear shin, a, a kippah? Yes. So, the, 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 fem, the female soul manifests from the sphere of Malchut, which mm -hmm. is the Shekhinah. So, she doesn't need the separation between the, the, this godly revelation. A man no, is not coming from this sphere, that he has to have this separation. So, we put it with a, we put a yarmulke on. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is literally like a, 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 a short explanation. There's yeah. much more depth into it. But we see that in, in many Hasidic sects and uh, Orthodox sects, they were, the men wear hats. So the mystical explanation to that, because a hat is called a or makif, a surrounding light, which mm. it's basically when I do a certain act in this world, I bring on me a certain energy. Yes, yes. Uh, to explain it a little bit different, it's like uh, if I want to carry something, let's say I, I want to carry five tons of, of bricks, then I need a truck, yes. I need a big truck. Or if I want to carry a lot of sand or fuel, whatever it is, I have to put it in, in some type of a wagon. And the fact that I will have a very huge wagon or truck or whatever you want to explain it, then I can put something in it. So this is called Merkava. Merkava is like a wagon. Okay, yeah. Char so, chariot or something. Yes. Uh, yeah, chariot. Yeah. Actually, Merkava yes. is also will be a chariot. I think yes. more chariot will be more... Uh, uh, yeah, also you can translate it as a chariot. Okay. But okay. I can do... Sir let's, just, let's just go to our second break quickly and uh, hold on to that thought. According to applied logic, the more winners we have, the greater your chances of winning. winning. So listen up for the next prize. It could be yours. 101.9 IFS. 101.9 megahertz of prizes. The best part of your day. The heart of your community. All the talk. All the music. All the news. Hi again. Good morning and welcome to the Cabana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And this morning I'm sitting together with Rabbi Lon Anifa, and, um, uh, which is an absolute treat and an absolute treat for the listeners. I get such wonderful responses and thank you. And anybody wanting to SMS, I'm able to access the SMS line on 34519 or even uh, to uh, phone in on 074 Six five four seven double three five, and the on air uh, email is on air at com. So please, any questions that you have, share uh, share with us. Any comments, we would love to hear from you. So, Alon, just before the break, you were speaking about um, the, the, the month of seven and the the letter Zion and the crown, and how we we are supposed to walk around. Like we have crowns on our heads to be we, proud. Yeah, we of, do have crowns. Yes. I mean, spiritually, we are yes. carrying a crown over us. Yes. Which actually, when chas v'shalom, a person does uh, the wrong act or something against the Torah, the crown gets removed for one second. That's why you, you not one second, it actually gets removed. But that's why you see, when you see a holy person, you see a, a very shine on the face, like a glow on the face. Yes. You do. So we are carrying crowns around us, and mainly because we are ma manifested from the ten sefirot. And I started mentioning this is literally on the edge of the the fork. I don't even know if it's a it's a term in English. In Hebrew, you say the edge of the fork when you want to express when it's not even in depth of the topic. But one of the many reasons why we wear hats is because I started explaining before how if you want to put like a big load, so you put it in in a wagon. So this is what's called Hamshacha. If I want to bring on myself a certain influence, a certain energy, a certain enlightenment, then I have to create a certain vessel. 
And one of the ways how I'm bringing on myself this godly revelation, that I cover my hair, head as a, in a hat, and if you see the hat's a, a circle. Yes. This is what's called a, a, in the Kabbalistic terminology, O Makif, uh, a surrounding light. Yes. I'm able to bring on myself, to, to dress on me this crown. So we are carrying, carrying these crowns on us, and the connection again to the month of Sivan is because if you, we mentioned that if you're looking at the letter Vav, then it, add on that the letter Zayin, it's, 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 Zayin is the letter Vav with a little crown. Now, we mentioned that we got a crown at the time of the giving of the Torah, and crown in Hebrew is Ketel. Yes. Amazingly, everything is amazing in the Torah, <laughs> but amazingly, if you're looking at the amount of letters in the Ten Commandments, it's 620 letters. Yes, yes. 620 letters is the numerical value of the word ketel, yes. crown. Yes. So we did get our crowns at the time of the Matan Torah. And I mean, nothing, nothing is by chance yes. in, the, in, in the Torah. We're going to get to it in, in a second. I want to talk a little bit about the, the tribe, but we'll see how it comes back to ketel. So the tribe of the month is the month of Zvulun. And we, we, you, you mentioned about before the, the horoscope, the sign. Yes. So the sign of the month is Teomim, is uh, uh, twins. So we see again a, a great connection to the month of twins. First of all, we see in the Torah many, many places about twins. And we know that a bride, a bride and groom yeah. are considered a twin. Yes. And at the time of Matan Torah, that was a, a wedding. We got married with the, the master of the universe. He was the groom, we were, we were called Knesset Israel. we are the bride, and the mountain was the chupa, because we know that the Kadosh Baruch turned the mountain upside down on us. Yeah. The Torah was the ketubah, <clears throat> excuse me. So we are also considered a, 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 a bride and groom, and a bride and groom are twins. But we see many places in the Torah that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, that we have twins, Starting with the giving of the Torah, we got two tablets. Yes. Like when you think of it, we could have gotten one tablet. Why do we need two? Yes. So we got twins. Yes. There's a reason why we got one, uh, two tablets. We'll go to that in a, in a few minutes. But we got twin tablets. Yes. Again, one might say, okay, we could have gotten one tablet with four commandments and one tablet with six commandments. But no, we got twins. So we see the great connection for twins through the month of the Sivan and the giving of the Torah. But in the Torah, we see many places twins, and the first time we looking at, we find twins is Yaakov and Esav. Mm -hmm. Usually, twins represent similarity. Yes. But these twins represent the opposite similarity. Like Yaakov is a is a righteous man, and Esav is a wicked man. And but these are the first twins in the Torah. And when Torah comes to 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 tell us the story, first of all, the story happened. This is not like something invented. Yes. The, actually, the actual story happened. This is what's called when Rashi says, en mikra If it says in the Mikra, in the Torah, it happened. So don't think it's a fairy tale or an invention or a parable or something. It actually really happened. But when the Torah is talking about a twin, it's also teaching, about, teaching us. Now we know that Yaakov, later on his name became Israel, yes. and we are called the sons of Israel, Bnei Israel. So in us, it's explained in the teaching of Hasidut that we have a two levels in us. We have the level of a Yaakov, and we have the level of Israel. The level of Yaakov is a lower level uh, uh, in us, and you can separate the word Yud, a kev. Yud is the letter Yud, and a kev is a heel. So the, 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 the word Yaakov represents a, a lower level, level in us. The high level of us is Israel. Israel, if you separate the words, is li rosh, to me, a head. Yes. So this is a high level in us <clears throat> and represents the word Yaakov. And the opposite of Yaakov was a sav. So Yaakov, we know, was a righteous man. And Esav was a wicked man. Yaakov represents the Yetzel Tov, the good inclination, and Esav is representing the Yetzel Hara, the bad inclination. Yes. It comes constantly to battle us. Mm -hmm. And we see in the Torah that 
when Rivka used to go through next to a, a, a synagogue, or a, a, well, wasn't there? It's not talking about a synagogue. It's talking about a yeshiva, yeah. a bet midrash. Then Yaakov would start moving around yeah. in the stomach and want to go out. Excited, yes. <laughs> and then when she would go next to a, a, a place of idol worship, then, Yaak- then Asa would start uh, shaking in the stomach and want yeah. to go out. And that's why she got upset and she, they didn't have ultrasound then, but she figured <laughs> out that there's, two, that there's two kids. Then she went here, up here in the corner wow. to the yeshiva of Shem and Ever again. We keep mentioning them. And, I mean, we talked about it last, class, uh, last uh, interview, and we mentioned that we were 50 meters away from the cave. So she went there, and Shem told her that, uh, yes, you have uh, twins, and one will be a righteous man, one will be a wicked one. And then he gave her uh, a, a hint that we carry it up until today, and he told her, Umeleom, leom yamatz, meaning when one will rise, the other one will fall. Mm-hmm. So when Yaakov rises, then Esav falls down. But when Esav rises, then Yaakov will be down. Yes. And up until now, we see that every time that the Jews, they rise up, yes. then our enemies fall down. And yes. whenever our enemies are rising up, then we are in a much lower yes. level. So the whole concept of twins in the Torah is representing the power in us, that we have a, 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 a evil power and we have a positive power. Yes. And they cannot be equal. Mm-hmm. Either one is in control, or either the other one is in control. Either my yetzer tov, my good inclination, is in power. So it means that the evil inclination is diminished, and it's yes. under control. Yes. But if my yetzer ra takes power and he rises, it can only be that he's in power, and now my yetzer tov is low. And I constantly have a, this battle in me. Every human being has this battle, this battle between the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Throughout your day, you probably meet this battle at least 150 times. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do good? Should I do bad? Can I do this mitzvah right now or should I not do this mitzvah? Should I do this in chas v'shalom or should I not do it? I mean, we don't have the actual battle in our mind when we're really thinking about it. But sometimes we actually do. I mean, if you get to the point that you do think about it, that you're in a very good position. But in most cases... You, 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 you meet situations that you're about to do something, sometimes you do it without even thinking, which is a much lower level. Mm. But sometimes you do have this concept of thinking for two, three seconds. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Oh, I really want to do it. Then Yetzir Tov says, no, 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 it's, it's not the right thing. So we constantly have this battle, and this is this concept of Loom Loom Yamatz, that mm. one rises, the other one diminishes. And this is where we learn from the Torah that we have in us this power of the twins. Yes. And the twins represent here the, the, the good and the bad in us. And in anything that you're going to look at it, you'll see that we have the concept of this good and the bad. And I'm going to move to another topic just because I know we always run out of time. Yes. I'm going to, I yes. just want to cover a few things and then we'll come back as, according to how much time we have. So we said that the month of the Sivan is represented by the, the, the tribe of Zvulun. And we know that the, that the preceding month is presented by the month of Issachar. Mm-hmm. That's the month of Iyar. Yes. I wonder and how closely they were born. They were one born next to each other. One right next to each and other. And they were born right, uh, right after uh, the other. Zvulun. Children. Yeah. Yes. There were Leah's children. Zvulun is a little bit old, one uh, older, yes. and then came Issachar. Yes. So they are uh, in age very, very close, close. to each other. Mm-hmm. Even in the Torah, in, in the order, they yes. uh, uh, were born right after each other. But we know in the Torah that they had a, they had a business deal. Zvulun yes. and yes. And the business, the, the, the agreement was that Zvulun would go and do business. And Issachar would sit and study Torah. Issachar was known to be a Torah scholar. Mm-hmm. And from his tribe came out 250 Sanhedrot, it's a, a ah. supreme court, ah. and it's the tribe of Issachar were known to be the scholars. Yes. So they made a deal and they said, okay, Zvulun said, I'm going to go and make business, mm. and you, Issachar, are going to sit in a tent and, and yeshiva and learn Torah all day long. I'll financially support you, mm-hmm. and you give me half of your Torah yes. in the world to come. Yes. And that's what they used to do. Zvulun used to do business, they had ships. I mean, that's in a much later uh, time when they came into the land of Israel. But 
the, 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 the deal was that Zvolun will be the financial supporter and Issachar would be the, the scholar. And we even see that uh, how they uh, positioned all the tribes in Israel, that their position is right next to each other. So we see here a very strong connection, like twins, that these are the only time we see in the Torah that the brothers are very close to each other and connected. They're close to each other in age, they're close to each other in the physical position in the land of Israel, and they made this deal that it's like twins. I'll give you, you give me, yes. and the, this, this great connection. In the mystical teaching of it, Zvulun comes from the sphere of Ketel. Yes. I That's where that. the connection yes. that I said before that will yes. come back to the sphere of Ketel. Yes. So Zvulun comes from the, the sphere of Ketel, and Issachar comes from the sphere of Chochmah. Mm. And Chochmah gets its light and its energy from the sphere of Ketel. It's, un, it's right under Ketel. If you're yes. looking at the structure, yes. then there's, there's something, there's a term in yes. Kabbalah that is called three lines, yes. Shalosh Kavim. Yes. Before we mentioned again the number three and how the Torah is called Torah Meshuleshet, the, the, the Torah that comes in, in threes, if you're looking at the structure of the Sfirot, it has three lines. Mm -hmm. It has the right line, the left line, and the middle line. Kava mm -hmm. mean Kava small, but Kava chesed. The Kava emza, I'm sorry. So if you're looking at the structure of the Sfirot, then Keter is in the middle, then will come underneath it, Chochma in the middle, then Tiferet will be in the middle, yes. and then uh, 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 Bina will be in the middle, mm -hmm. and Yesod and Malchut are in the middle. These are all the middle line. Yes. So Chochma is right underneath Keter which means that Chochmah is getting its energy and its light from the sphere of Keter, mm -hmm. meaning that Issachar was getting his energy, his influence from Zvulun. Wow. So we see an interesting, uh, an interesting concept here that the, the Torah got its power from the, from the finance. From the physical. From, from the, the physical. physical yes. Zvul, Zvulun was presenting yes. the physical and the finance yes. and the money. And Issachar, who was sitting and studying Torah all day long, yes. had to be supported by Zvulun the physical part of it that, yeah, um, uh, physically yes. he supported him, which a lot of people have an a, a argument here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so the Torah needs the money, so let me go and work. And, and you see, oh, you're depending on us, all sorts of arguments coming up here. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but if you turn it around, yeah. Zvulun will enjoy the Torah of Issachar for eternity, not for 60, 70 years in this world. For eternity, he's getting the Torah. Wow. But we see an amazing combination here between the physical and the spiritual, that the physical actually feeds the spiritual in this world. It's, a, it's a, an unbelievable combination that, again, when the month of Sivan, when we got the Torah, up until we got the Torah, the heavenly realm and the supreme realm and the lower world were separated. The, the earthly world was here. I mean, when Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov used to do mitzvot, there was no spirituality in them. I mean, they were in very high yes, level. Yes. They didn't need it. But at the time of the giving of the Torah, we see that Moshe went up to the Torah, mm -hmm. to the mountain, and God came down on the mountain. The concept is called El Yonim Tachtonim. The, the higher ones came down to the lower ones. Tachtonim Alula Al Yonim. And the lower ones came up to the higher ones. Which was, it was a, a, a combination. Of, of, of coming down on the mountain and going up to the mountain. This is when Hashem changed Kivyechol, the, the, the deal. And He says, up until now, the spiritual world was separated from the physical world. Now I'm connecting the spiritual and the physical. Now, you, in order to bring down spirituality into the world, you can only do it through the physical world. Which means if I want to bring godliness into the world, I have to put physical filling on my hand. Mm -hmm. I have to cover myself with a talis. I have to build a sukkah. I have to shake a lulav. All the mitzvot, I'm taking something physical, and with that, it becomes a tool to bring the spiritual into the world. Yes. And that changed in Matan Torah. That, that there was a, a, a combination, an exchange. Yes. And this is the combination, this is the exchange between Zvulun and Issachar, that Zvulun says, I'm going to give you from mine, you're going to give me from yours, which then manifests into our life that the only way to have any successful relationship is a give and take. That I give you and you give me. If it's a husband and wife, there has to, has to be a give and take. If it's a boss and an employer, a give and take. If it's a father and a child, a mother and a child, it's, a give and, it's always give and take. Yes. If I'm missing this, this uh, motion, 
in a in a relationship yes. it will never never be never succeed yes. and it will only only always will will uh, uh, not work out yes and it creates a relationship and also ties into the uh, body part of the the walking and um, the, leg. the legs and um the it's the left leg huh? okay so we yeah. we need to go to our um fourth break and we'll be back with you now he is a rabbi spiritual adventurer, teacher, speaker, writer, and author. He is proudly Jewish. He is Rabbi Ari Shishler, and he's exclusive to IFA. Join Rabbi Ari Shishler for the first day every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Good morning and welcome to the Cabana Show, Body, Mind and Soul. And I have the pleasure, the absolute pleasure, of being with Rabbi Lon Anava um, together with me this week. And we are speaking about the month of seven. And um, Alon has just been explaining to us the relationship between Yisachar and Zebulon and how that relates to the relationship that uh, was needed for the Torah to be actually expressed into this physical world. Because, as you said before, it was, it was a very much physical, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, they did the mitzvot, it was very, very physical. However, when the Jewish people received the Torah, it became a relationship. It, uh, the, the two met, and it's, it's quite almost an oxymoron in that... How do the two coexist? But they do, and it's possible, and that transcendence is possible. And uh, it, I think it's um, the Jewish people's uh, it's part of our mandate on this earth to actually do that and to show other people how to do that. So just getting back to um, Yisachar and Zebulon in terms of... Um, the, the, the place where the, uh, um, the Neshoma came from of Zebulon was from the Keter, and then Yisachar was from uh, Chochmah. And that combination, that twinning, uh, brought, it, it, it feels very, very, very deep to me, almost you know, beyond words, to actually describe that kind of relationship. And... That brought up, also it feels like it brought about a twinning, almost a Siamese twinning with Hashem. Exactly. Yes. You know, you see another amazing connection with the whole twin. And I mentioned before that the, 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 the tablets the, that we got are twins. Yes. And amazingly, we got two tablets. And each one of them is holding five of the commandments. The right tablet, the first five, is represented by Yaakov, again. Yes. And the, the other five, the left tablet, is represented by Asaf. Uh, if you're looking at the right tablets, it's more of a positive thing, that you have to love Hashem and believe in Hashem and honor the Shabbat and honor your, your, uh, your parents. It's a more of a positive action. If you're looking at the left tablet, the second twin, it's all the don'ts. All don't the kill and don't steal. All the things that Esav represents, killing and stealing and committing adultery and lying. And there's constantly this relation between good and bad. Mm -hmm. There's constantly, you know, even in many other uh, spiritual teachings, even the Chinese spiritual teaching, there's the whole concept of yin and yang. Yes. There's... Uh, there's Everywhere you look, there's constantly this relation, this cycle. Yes. That one is a giver, one is a taker, and then it switches, one becomes a giver, and then the other one becomes a taker. Any normal relationship has to be with some type of a giving and taking motion. And that goes back again to the relationship between us and God. Essentially, He's the giver. He gave us life. He gave us everything. But we also, you know, we're naturally, we're taking. There's not even an option here. <laughs> but we're also givers. Yeah. We, we serve God. We build a place for Him in this world by following His Torah, by representing here Him, <clears throat> by us doing mitzvot. We're actually building a, a dwelling place for God in this world. This is the concept of mitzvah. A mitzvah, you can translate it as the word uh, commandment. But mitzvah comes from the word tzavta. Tzavta means together, connection. 
And when I do a mitzvah, I become united with the master of the universe. Mm -hmm. people, people find it very hard to see the connection. Mm -hmm. Why do a piece of leather on my hand <laughs> will connect me to, the, to, the, to God? Mm -hmm. I don't see the connection. Why, when I strike a match, a match and I light a candle, it makes me spiritual. A lot of people, when they come to, 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 the, to the religion, and they're like, you know, I think spirituality is to sitting on a mountain and meditating, or to, I don't know what. I don't see anything spiritual in all your, those rituals that you are doing. But God decided that through these physical rituals, and through the physical things that we use, that's how He's going to dress Himself in this world. So when a man puts tefillin on, God dresses Himself in a physical piece of leather, don't try to understand it now. Maybe we can do a, one interview explaining why the physical and why it's getting dressed specifically in, in, in these things. Why Dafka, a, a black piece of leather? There's reasons for that. Nothing yes. is invented here yes. and that somebody went in the street and fell on a piece of leather and said, Hey, <laughs> let's use that. So everything has meanings to it. But the point is that God decided how he's going to get dressed in this world through nature. And we are the, the emissaries that we do that. So we, we are activating this motion of you giving to me, I'm giving to you, I'm receiving, you're taking, and so forth. And, and this relationship was magnified and ma mainly came to act at the time of the giving of the Torah. Yes. Because we were able to start sharing the spiritual and the physical. Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, they used to do all the mitzvot, but, but they didn't do it with the physical articles. I mean, they didn't shake a lulav. They used to do the exact same thing. Yaakov used to put filling on, but he didn't put it with leather straps. It says in the Torah how he put the sticks on his hand and wow. tied them with a, with a, wow. with a rope. Wow. So he did something similar, but in the, the spiritual realm, he was able to achieve the exact yes. same thing. Yes. But once he finished with the sticks, he, I mean, what the Torah tells us is that he put seven sticks on the hand, like fill in, and then tie them with a, with a rope on his hand. But once he finished, he threw the sticks to the garbage and they didn't have any holiness in it. It was back to being regular sticks. Now when I put fill in on, I permeate the godly power into the piece of leather. So I have the power of actually taking something spiritual and dressing it into the physical. So when a woman takes flour, and water, yes. and puts it together, and makes dough, and bakes b'chala, and then she takes 10% of it, which is called maser, and she takes it out. This is called hafrashat chala. This is one of the biggest mitzvahs a woman should do. All the blessing comes from that mitzvah. I know many women, they raise their eyebrows. What? I'm not a baker. <laughs> it takes me two minutes to walk to the bakery. Why should I make my hands dirty? I'll just buy chala. Yeah. This is the biggest mitzvah of a woman. women. Women don't have many mitzvahs for many different reasons. And one of them is baking challah. And, and unfortunately, many women don't do it. And this is the source of all the blessings. Mm -hmm. But the woman takes a physical dough and she says a bracha. She says a blessing. She separates a little bit of the dough. And, and the whole ritual and the act, she permeates in the dough this unbelievable holiness. And then she gives it to her family, and everybody eats it, and it becomes one of you. So you 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 basically dissecting, and, and you're putting in you something holy, that has a holy power and a holy revelation in it. And this is this unbelievable relationship between the, the spiritual world and the physical world. The met unfortunate that a lot of people look at the rituals, and they're like, you know, the rituals don't look holy at all. Mm. Like, even if you look at all the, the jobs that they do in the temple, and even in the tabernacle, mm. it looks a little bit barbaric, you know, slaughtering animals, mm, yes. taking grains of wheat and throwing them on the fire. fire and all, if you really read yes. all the jobs in the, the, the Beit HaMikdash, and they did it the same thing in the desert, in the tabernacle, there's not one thing that seems holy there. St you know, stripping animals, cutting them to pieces, burning pieces of their, of their, of their uh, organs, and, and t all sorts of weird things, taking their blood, sprinkling the blood. I mean, it sounds pretty barbaric. Yes. It doesn't even sound holy. But the connection is 
that first of all God decides how he manifests himself into this world we just don't understand it it's almost like me sometimes I do certain things and my three-year-old will come and tell me Abba why are you doing that because for the three-year-old it doesn't make sense yeah. and I tell him oh, because one day you'll understand yeah. so we don't understand God's God's uh, 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 wisdom we try to but we can't really relate to it the reality is that we we, we are in the relationship with God that He's constantly giving us life and we giving Him the mitzvot that He wants us to do, we're doing it and, and, and we're creating a space for Him in this world so we constantly see this relationship of, of giving and taking which is built and, and getting the power in the month of Siva and that we got the Torah it's kind of like you said before, where God made us twins in mm -hmm. some way to say, I mean we can't call ourselves twins to the mass of the universe mm -hmm. But there is this connection, this unity, this, this uh, uh, duplication, so to say. But mainly what one wants to take from this month, you mentioned before that the body part corresponding to the month is the, is the leg, the left leg. Yes. And the left leg represents a lot of things. Uh, you know, somebody not too long asked me, because I told him the story about Yaakov and the angel that were fighting, and the angel grabbed his leg, and, and, and hurt him. So somebody not long asked me, which leg was it? Yes. I told him it was the left leg. The left leg, wow. It was the left leg, and there's, there's the reason for that, because all the dinim, the, the judgments, come from the left leg. Yes. And this is the month, that the, 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 the part of the body that represents this is the left leg, which means, because the, the, we got the Torah with a lot of judgments. It came down in judgments. Yes. But the power of the month is actually the power that, of building relationships. Okay. And in building a relationship, it's only with the motion of walking, the motion of movement. It can, you can't build a relationship by sitting and not doing nothing. Yeah. Relationship has to be worked on, like a leg that is moving the body. Mm -hmm. A relationship constantly has to move and, 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 and uh, be in a, in a motion of walking. Okay, so with that left foot forward, we're going to go to our last break. We'll be back with you now. Good morning. This is the Cabana Show Body, Mind and Soul of Imuna. And it is so good to be with you this Wednesday morning, the 16th of seven. And we are speaking about seven. Rabbi Alon Anava is together with me. And we are, we've discussed many aspects of the month of seven. And uh, just before the break, we spoke about the left leg. And that everything to do with Torah requires movement. And I was just... Uh, thinking that the, the word halocha and halochet to, to actually walk are absolutely connected. Exactly. You can't do the one without, without the other. So we are in the movement of uh, doing Hashem's will and uh, this month is very, very, very powerful to bring that about, to bring that transcendence, to really uh, allow yourself to go into that and be with that energy, that transcendent, transcendent energy. So, Alun, just in, in wrapping up, um, if we just look at the, uh, the, um, the, the, control, the, yeah, the, the, the walking, and uh, uh, I was, the, the month of Nisan, which is when we came out of Egypt, is the sense of speaking. And when people say, you know, he walks his talk, <laughs> that we we need to walk our talk. Eh? Yeah. And then uh, they say in America, I don't know how they say it in South Africa, you talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? Yes. And talking is one thing, but yes. now let's see you walking. So, yeah, this, this is the whole thing, that there's a very big difference from theory and practical, and yes. actually doing. Yes. Thinking of something, I know many people, I know this individual that tells me, oh, one day I'm going to keep Shabbat, and I'm going to do all the mitzvot. Well, you'll see. One day I'm going to do it. He probably will. So, I, he's still in theory mode. I told him, no, the Torah is doing. Yes. This, is, this is called the world of doing. Olam yes. We're not talking. This is not the world of dibu, of talking. Yes. Here Hashem tells you, do. Don't, don't, don't talk. Even our yes. sages say, hamase hu aikav. Doing is the, is, the, is the main part. Talking and thinking and, and cont contemplating, that's very nice. But we came here to do. And what represents doing is, is, is the legs. The legs are the doers. They don't think. Legs don't think. No, they don't They think. just walk. 
Yes. And they carry the body, and they carry the body, I mean the mind, the head is, you would think, the most important part of the body, but the head cannot move anywhere without legs. Mm -hmm. The motion of halicha, exactly how you said, to walk means halicha, halechet. Yes. And halacha, oral law, yes. is right exactly the same. Mm -hmm. That the point is that the Torah is constantly has to be in a motion of, of walking. Walking and growing, and if I'm today standing in one position, tomorrow I have to be better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the next day I have to be even better from the day before. The point is to take it in a, in, a, in a level, in a motion of walking. But one important thing to learn from that is that, that this is the month of building relationships, and it has the power of building relationship. And, a, and a re the basics of relationship is, first of all, be a, a, a giver. Don't be a taker. Okay. If, you, if you're going to be in a constant in a motion of taking, then, then it, you, you're, not going to, you're not going to create a space of even giving. Yes. The healthiest way is first you give. Because if you give, you make space to actually take. And this is a very powerful time, yes. a month, to, to concentrate on relationships. And, and, and unfortunately, couples or any type of relationships mm -hmm. that are having uh, difficulties, mm -hmm. that's a, a good month to sit down and say, okay, let's try to negotiate here. Let's see where, 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 where we can uh, uh, bridge uh, uh, between us. Yes. So this is a month, I mean, we don't have much time left. We have another 14 days, but it's a very powerful month. This is the power, one of the many powers of the month of building relationships and exchanging, so to say, information and energy. Yes. And one should take that and, and concentrate and to tap into this power that if you build this, uh, this closeness, this relationship, which we're, you know, our whole life is based on relationships. Mm -hmm. We had an interview a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Why do we need relationships? Yes. But when I actually empower that, this motion of a relationship, that's when I'm really worthy for the crown. Mm -hmm. Because when I break relationships and I create anger and hate and, and, and fighting, this is called, uh, I'm creating a separation. It's the opposite of a, of a twin. The twin usually represents the connection, the, the unity. So if I want to get this crown, then it only can be with unity. And we see when they got the Torah, it had to, they, they got it with unity. Yes. They, they got it only because they were, they were united. Yes. So Bezat Hashem, we should all um, look into our own life and see how I can unite worlds and how I can, instead of colliding worlds and how I, instead of separating worlds, in relationships, how can I can unite them? Bezat Hashem, with that, we'll merit to get again the, the second Torah, which is the Torah of Mashiach. Amen, amen. And it seems like, do you think it, it falls a lot on, I was listening to one of your uh, talks on, uh, on women's uh, role in, in a relationship, and, and it had to do with the, the mitzvahs of the woman. And I think the question the, the, the lady asked was, uh, she, she feels that she's a little bit more advanced, spiritually ad more advanced, and uh, than her husband, and how to actually get that balance, how to get, because it's, a, as you say, a, a relationship, and how to, and women have that ability to really delve into the relationship and to build it. Yeah. And... Um, so by default, women are more. Yeah, yeah, by default, women are much more. First of all, they're much more holier, so they they have more ability to tap into that realm, and 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 bring it down into the world. I mean, women in essence are much more special than than men. I think we should definitely dedicate yes. one class for that. Okay. But uh, yeah, the, the the women have a, a much more special power, and in essence, when you're looking at it. A smart woman can actually balance the relationship much faster than a man, because men are more physical, they, they're, they're much more immature. I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing already to the male <laughs> listeners, I'm also one. But women are much more mature, they're much more centered, they're much more holier. They're, they have the power of actually, if they're smart, of creating that relationship that it will be much more smooth and better. Mm. Definitely. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, Alon. Uh, uh, and to my beloved listeners, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for all the messaging. And um, Baruch Hashem, we look forward to next week. I hope Alon's available. Yeah, we, we booked the whole summer. We booked the summer, and it's really summer here. 
So with that, it just remains for me to say, have the most beautiful Wednesday, the most beautiful rest of the week, and the most beautiful Shabbos, and to build your relationships, to build your relationship with yourself, to build your relationship with everybody around you in any way. That's the reason that people are put into your lives, is only to build your relationships, and to build your relationship with Hashem. So with that, until next week, from Kabana, bye-bye. We bring the news. We bring it live. This is 101.9. Thank you.